We're live my news up here at Desawe in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And my name is Aisha Yakubu coming up in the bulletin. Security beef dropping precincts of parliament following a botched suicide attempt. Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, cautions general public not to invest in a new investment scam, Loom. Also coming up in the bulletin, Auditor General threatens to resign if government interferes in his work. And on the international front, U.S. military releases video showing Iranian special forces removing an explode unexploded mine from side of an oil tanker damaged in an attack in the Gulf of Oman on Thursday. Breaking details of these and more tonight here at the Sports, there's entertainment news as well. We're live on DSTV channel 279, TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on 3news.com. To our very first story, security has been beefed up in the precinct of parliament following the botched suicide attempt. While members of parliament are calling on leadership to effectively ensure there is strict security in the house, first deputy speaker is blaming members for the breaches in security. Kojo Mensah, a Kwesimin team subject, caused the stir in parliament on Thursday when he tried jumping into the chamber just as parliament had adjourned. Police quickly wedged him away, putting him in detention a day after security arrangements have changed. As the news team made way into the premises of parliament, we encountered a series of thorough search by the police. And then there's another checkpoint at the car park. This is the level of security check that they will do to ensure that not there's anything enters into the house. Well, it hasn't been like this except at the main entrance of the house where some screening is done with the scanners, but it has now started from here. Few meters away from the car park, the major driveway into job 600, there's another search at the main entrance. There's a thorough search and scanner screening. In the chamber, members express worry over the development. There was a reported attempted suicide in Parliament yesterday, of which um, the Public Affairs Department had, you know, issued a statement to that effect. But I was hoping... I, I, I remember, if there's a security breach, our marshals will give us a report. As of now, we don't have any such report. Uh, yesterday's uh, development is a wake-up call for all of us. It clearly indicates that the security architecture of Parliament it's in question. And Mr. Speaker, on this floor, time and again, we have had reason to complain and to draw attention to the fact that sometimes, even when you are in your office, all of a sudden, out of the blue, people walk into your office trying to sell you donuts. Anybody who enters them was aided by one member or another. If we breach the rules. If we quarrel with security men who prevent visitors we have not approved, how will the police, uh, the security men, be able to assist us? I endure that often. But you trace, and the person entered in the name of some other MP, goes to see that MP, and then follows up to my place. All of them will come here. They check with us. If they, we don't give clearance, they won't come in. So while we're asking security people to do leadership to do that, we must assist them by first abiding by the rules we have made for ourselves. And so, sorry, the Defense Minister has rubbished reports of heightened insecurity in the country following reported cases of kidnapping. Dominic Nitual, who is also the Member of Parliament for the Bimbela constituency, is saying there is no terror threat despite terror alerts by some foreign missions in the country. We appreciate the effort made by our partners, the Canadians, but the effort and all that was done, I can state for a fact that 
We appreciate what they did, but they did not take part in what has happened to the release of the girls. It's a subtle admittance, but emphatic insistence, Canada played no role in the rescue or release of the two Canadian girls. Eight persons were arrested in connection with the kidnappings in Kumasi and have subsequently been put before an Accra High Court, remanded in police custody by the Accra High Court. Parliament is enraged about the heightened insecurity in parts of the country. Quabra East MP Francisca Oting, in whose constituency the kidnappings happened, made a statement on the floor, raised concerns on how her constituency is becoming notorious for these kidnappings. I must say it is a great discomfort and shameful that some of these alleged kidnappers were found in one of the most peaceful and serene areas in the Ashanti region that anybody could live in. It is therefore important that such perception of insecurity in Kwabri East is cleared from the minds of Ghanaians and other foreign investors who would like to do business within the constituency. Pusiga MP Ayamba Ladi Ai says much as the security agencies need to be commended for their efforts, a similar effort must be put into rescuing the Takradi girls. For us, to be able to say we have done well by being able to get two girls and to exonerate ourselves from the international front about our security issues, we need to put in more strategies to ensure that we get our own girls. Defense Minister Dominic Nitu was emphatic on who played what role. Let me state that all this was professionally done. Because if it was not, the lives of these young people could have been put in danger. But it was professionally done. And the actual people who led the actual day, the rescue on that day itself, to enter the physical location and take them out, was the SWAT team of the National Security. In the face of all these terror alerts and travel advice from other countries, this is Ghana's position for its citizens. But let me assure every citizen of Ghana, Mr. Speaker, that Ghana is a very safe country. It's a normal routine that when an incident happens, countries like the US, countries like Canada, countries like the UK, we issue travel warnings. If we wanted to issue travel warnings, in fact, every day we could have been issuing travel warnings for our citizens going to the U.S. Because if you check the crime rate, if you check the crime rate in any of these countries, <laughs> Ghana, Ghana builds in, in terms of numbers. Now, it is emerging that the two kidnappers, a Canadian woman who were rescued on Wednesday, demanded an $800,000 ransom for their release. Six out of the eight persons arrested in connection with the kidnapping were remanded in police custody by the Accra High Court when they made their first appearance on Friday since their arrest. The court presided over by Justice George Bwedi remanded them for two weeks following a plea by the prosecution that investigations into the case were still ongoing. The accused persons are Samson Agalo, a.k.a. Romeo, Elvis Ojiowe, Def Omasa, all Nigerians. The others are Yusuf Yakubu, Abdul Nasser, and Seydou Abubakar, a.k.a. Mba. Ghanaians. They were all charged with two counts of conspiracy to commit kidnapping, while Agalo, Ojiowe, Omasa, and Yakubu were separately charged with kidnapping. Senior State Attorney Hilda Gregg said Agalo struck up an acquaintance with Yakubu in March 2019. Agalo discussed kidnapping as a trade with his new friend. Agalo then went to Nigeria and recruited Ojiowe and Omasa to be part of the gang. On June 4, 2019, the gang went on a kidnapping operation in Kumase and managed to kidnap the two Canadians after accosting them at their hostel at Inshaeso, a suburb of Kumase. The gang sent the two girls to an uncompleted building at Kenyansi Kropo. 
The prosecutor added that Agalo, who was the leader of the gang, called the families of the two girls and demanded $800,000 as ransom. In order to prove that they were serious, the gang smeared blood on the girls and on the floor. On June 11, a national security team led by Colonel Michael Opoku arrested Yusuf, who later led them to the rest of the gang. The hearing continues on July 1, 2019. Well, let's go to some crime stories. This time around in the central region, the Agona Swedo Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service in the central region has mounted search for a 33-year-old woman for allegedly stealing a baby. Now, the suspect, Patricia Goda, is said to have stolen a nine-month baby boy of the head pastor of the Salvation House of Prayer Ministry, James Aesu, in Agona Street Room. Narrating the incident to TV3 of camera, the station officer for the Agona Suedru Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit, Chief Inspector Philip Arthur, said the suspect, Patricia Godo, who is a stranger, had gone to visit the pastor in his residence on Sunday morning, claiming to be a native of Achim Etreso, where the pastor also comes from, and offered to join the pastor and his family in their Sunday morning church service. Chief Inspector Philip Arthur added, the pastor's wife left the baby in the care of his siblings, including a 14-year-old foster child, after they, together with the suspect, had closed from church. When uh, That's where the suspect, Patricia Godot, took the baby and his 7-year-old sister under the pretense of buying them food and bolted with a 9-month baby, leaving the 7-year-old girl at a lorry station in Agona Sridru. The Ghana National Association of Teachers is demanding a pragmatic approach to resolving educational challenges in deprived communities. In an interview with TV3 after visiting some island communities in the Keta municipality, National Youth Coordinator for NAT, Thomas Musa, was worried attaining the SDG Goal 4 will remain a mirage if concerns are not addressed holistically. Adequate and the absence of teachers, lack of infrastructure, teaching and learning materials remain key challenges affecting effective education in rural Ghana. Additionally, most rural teachers as well as pupils travel long distances to school, impacting their contact hours. Some have to cross rivers, lakes and in some cases the sea without any protection. A visit to some island communities by the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, as part of its annual activities to mark the World Day Against Child Labor brought to the four key challenges. All the communities, including Bomigo, Fuveme, and Atiavi, have diverse educational challenges with over 600 adult population. Total enrollment at Bomigo schools from kindergarten through to junior high level stood at a little over 100. Infrastructure here is deplorable, whilst textbooks, computers for ICT are non-existent. Teachers cross the Volta Lely from adjoining communities without life jackets. The school started in 1952. We just started the GHS session in 2015. And uh, when they wrote the ABC exam, they had 100% with uh, aggregate uh, 19 to 24. Inadequate classrooms force teachers to combine classes at Fuveme. Most other pupils come to school with their own furniture. There was no furniture in the JHS3 at the time of the visit. We were told the BC candidate took them across the river to the examination centers. So the government should help us to separate the classes in order to get a teacher for them. Teachers from Winyagbo had to wait all morning at Atiavi because there's only one boat used by all. The National Youth Coordinator for NAT, Thomas Musa, was touched. I think that it's about time that our duty bearers take time their busy schedule to visit the islands to see what is really happening. Because the year 2030 is around the corner. Not only that, we are talking about education for all. And so for us to be 
assured that we are on the right track and we are really moving and we are leaving no one behind as they go for is selling us we have to move the duty bearers onto the island he earlier presented live jackets to the teachers well, to some more news here. Now, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, EOCO, is cautioning the general public not to invest in a new popular investment scam known as Loom. Now, a statement issued by EOCO adds that anyone who invests with Loom does so at their own risk. The statement explains that Loom gets people to recruit other people to invest money, much like a pyramid selling scheme. The Loom sits in a circle and every time a new person is recruited, others are pushed closer to the center of the circle. Now, the last person, that's last people to invest lose their money. This fraudulent scheme targets young people who are internet savvy. Loom was first uncovered in the UK and is now moving across the world with different names such as Loom Circle, Fractal, Mandala, Blessings Loom, and Loom Money Nigeria. That notwithstanding, the Security and Exchange Commission on June 11, 2019, cautioned the public that Loom is not licensed and thus its operations within Ghana remain illegal. And welcome to Mission. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Some persons with disabilities in the Setra Kumu district have complained of being sidestepped when it comes to disbursement of the District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability. Physically challenged Regina Echampoma alleges unregistered persons with disabilities get disbursements, leaving out those registered with the Federation. Bright Nanamfo has more. Regina Echampoma lives in Kumeu, in the Setre Kumeu district of the Ashanti region. Her disability has not stopped her from living a decent life. She, on her own, learned to make slippers. Sabra, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go I learned designing slippers for sale to augment what I received from social welfare. My daughter advised me so that I can earn some income to look after myself. Support from the social welfare department of the district was inadequate. She could not rely on it to feed herself and family. I thought about renting plastic chairs and so when the common fund came, I asked for plastic chairs and it has supported my chalewate business. Though she runs the rental business with the support of the assembly, her footwear trade is more profitable. An executive of the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, she raised concerns about how persons not registered with the group benefit at the expense of those registered. The guidelines allow every person with disability to assess the common fund, but it is important that we form associations. Some assembly members register people who are not members. This is bad. She says this pushes registered persons who don't benefit onto the streets. The Kumewood District Assembly Social Welfare Department, however, said this is not the case. Since the assembly members always are around in the assembly, and since the PWDs, they are not mobile all the time, and they come around and pick a form from the office 
and take it to them in the communities. Then they fill for them and submit to the office. So if they want um, did executives to come and pick the form and give it to them in their communities and submit, we don't have a problem. But we know that they will find it difficult because uh, coming from, let's say, Pepiase, and you have a member from Oyoko, how can you come from Pepiase, come and pick a form here, and then go to Oyoko and fill for the person and submit it before you go back to Pepiase? It's, it's difficult. So if the Oyoko assemblyman is around and maybe a PWD in his community complains to him that he or she has not benefited or probably needs a beneficiary form, he can come around, pick a form and go and fill for him. So it's just that we have to, or that some of we have to communicate with them to tell them that after filling the forms, they should try and join the association. For the district chief executive of Sechre Kumewu, the assembly will not deny any PWD a share of the common fund. This is what is prescribed by the guidelines. So registering them gives you a certain policy direction. So, yes, we don't want to say that if you are not registered, you can't benefit. But it is also fair that those who are registered take 90% of the whole amount. So that it, it encourages you who it's not registered to quickly move in. We don't collect money. If you go to my hometown, that principle worked. Uh, I'm not sure. There is one lady called I'm not sure. Oh, DC, crowd free me, chrome, to me register. So the first train came and she couldn't get it. The second came, she couldn't get it. The third, when she got registered, I said, yes, you are registered. Over 600 persons with disability live in the district. Authorities want all PWDs registered so they can be supported. Bright Nananfo, TV3, Kumeu. And that's all for Mission Tonight. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks for your time. Well, President Kofuado has extended an invitation to the people of Trinidad and Tobago to visit Ghana and join in the celebration of the 400th anniversary of the start of the transatlantic slavery dubbed Year of Return. The president addressed the media after holding bilateral discussions with Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. 2019 marks the 400-year anniversary of the first recorded arrival in 1619 of the first 20 enslaved Africans in the Commonwealth of Virginia, which was to become part of the United States of America, initiating some of the most barbaric episodes, the transatlantic slave trade and slavery. We in Ghana will ensure that the focus of activities commemorating the arrival of the first African slaves in Virginia showcases the achievements, creativity, ingenuity, and resilience of the African peoples through the ages. In reasserting our African personality and identity, about which our first leader, Kwame Nkrumah, spoke so eloquently on the eve of Ghana's independence, we must be proud of our rich heritage, a rich heritage which encompasses the ancient kingdoms of Benin, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Congo, Mali, Mutapa, Songhe, and Zimbabwe. I am proud to be an African. After the launch of the Year of Return in Washington, D.C., Ghana continued with the December 2018 Full Circle Festival, involving over 70 African-American celebrities visiting Ghana to reconnect with the ancestral heritage. Additionally, the Homecoming and Investment Summit, the African-American Investment Forum, the Pan-African and Emancipation Day celebrations, the Deba from Jamestown to Jamestown, the Film Festival and the Full Circle Festival are some of the activities that will be held to commemorate the year-long event. You're watching News 360. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. There's more news after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back to News 36. We're getting to the business news tonight. And the Vice President has called on the European Union to increase its investment from the current $300 million to $500 million in the coming years. Now, speaking at the closing ceremony of a two-day conference on job creation organized by the European Union in Accra, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya said 
the increase in investment will stimulate job creation and also spearhead the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. The vice president recalled the immeasurable contributions of the European Union to supporting the African continent. He again emphasized on his financial and technical support to the continent, promoting a strong macroeconomic stability. In Ghana, the vice president called on the European Union to consider increasing its investment. Dr. Mohamed Baumia said this will create more jobs to absorb the teamy unemployed youth. The EU represents by far the biggest source of foreign direct investment, bringing in close to $300 million every year without fail for the past 20 years, as well as the biggest provider of development assistance with more than $500 million and over this period. He again underscored the need to add value to Ghana's exports to meet standards in the European markets. Be assured that we are committed to advancing sustainable and inclusive growth, economic transformation and development by enhancing the business and investment climate as well as by mobilizing investments in strategic areas of infrastructure, energy, digitization, connectivity, transportation and agriculture. Vice President of the European Union, Jarekin Katainen, pledged stronger financial commitment to create jobs in the country. The World Economic Forum has estimated that the global investment gap in, uh, is uh, 2.5 trillion US dollars per year. Traditional resources of aid will not be enough. If we want to get there, we need to mobilize private investment and invest heavily. He again assured to support governments in its agenda beyond aid. At the very heart of the interim EPA that Ghana and the EU have agreed on, it is an asymmetrical but reciprocal trade agreement. It is also important for Ghana's industry policy because it means access to cheaper, high-quality industrial inputs from the EU, which will support the development of industrial value chains in the country. The theme for the two-day conference was boosting investment for sustainable jobs in Ghana. Well, the Auditor General has threatened to resign if government interferes in his work. Uh, Daniel Demelovo says any of such interference will undermine the retrieval of funds from uh, culpable public officers. He was speaking at the maiden edition of an anniversary lecture organized by Occupy Ghana Audit Service and the Attorney General in Accra. The Auditor General swore to protect the independence of the audit service with his life. He insisted that any interference by government will undermine and compromise the retrieval of funds from culpable officers. Internal auditors have become helpless. Not that they are not capable of doing what they should do, but their independence has been compromised unduly. I keep arguing that, look, take an auditor's independence away and it's as useless as a paper or anything. The most important thing about an auditor is his independence. That's why I protect my, with my life. I say, I prefer dying than you taking my independence away. I will not give you my independence. Doesn't matter who. Yes, if you want to take it, I'll give you your job. <laughs> I'm not going to succumb to that. So the independence is very important. So far, the Auditor General has retrieved over 5 billion cities from a contract sums, estimated at over 11 billion cities in the public service. He again emphasized that the audit service will adopt prudent measures to protect and safeguard the public purse. He warned the heads of public institutions and the MMDAs to deal with ghost names on their payroll or risk forfeiting their salaries. If you are head of a government department and you have ghosts on your payroll, we are not going to just take the ghosts. We will collect all the money from you. Because under Regulation 297, the Financial Administration Regulation, you have a duty to ensure that the people paid on your payroll are people working for you. So if you fail in that duty, we are not going to look for the ghosts. We take the money from you and you're going to look for the ghosts. 
He again proposed a reward for internal auditors who will seek to pursue legal redress against institutions which have duped the state. I'm also suggesting that if it is possible, we should not only decentralize the prosecution of corruption to special prosecutor, we should commercialize it, say that individuals should be able to go and prosecute and then the reward should be good. In that case, I'm sure some young accountants and lawyers can come together and say, as for this case, we won't allow it to go. Because if we get 20% of it, our economy recovery program will have been successful. A founding member of Occupy Ghana, Isan Kuma, called for adequate resourcing of state agencies to work. Public property by false statements could attract five years in jail. It is in our law. I love this one. There's an additional penalty that if you have used government monies in any of these ways, the court could compel you to transfer your assets in Ghana to Ghana. Indeed, your assets outside Ghana, the law says. A Supreme Court judge, Justice Doche, proposed the review of laws on assets and declaration to also impose an obligation on private institutions to do the same. There are many people who, whose wealth cannot be explained. You are a director, you are a judge, you buy a plot of land, $200,000. Land's commission will process it for you, but internal revenue will inquire how you can buy it. And that's all for the news here, News 316. My name is Aisha Yakubu. I'm black and proud. Yes, you are black and proud. <laughs> My name is Alfredo Kansi, and I am black and proud. <laughs>